Getting married today is challenging, with the U.S. marriage rates dropping nearly 60% over the last 50 years and an 8.6% decline recently. That's why if you keep following the herd and do what other women are doing to get married, like being emotionally unavailable, trying to be the boss bitch, always trying to win, always trying to get your power, you'll never get long-term relationships. But the truth is, is that people are getting married today, but what you'll notice is that they're doing something different. And the women getting married have different learnable traits that seem to make guys want to come into them long term. And this is what I want to be able to cover today. The system that I'm going to be teaching you guys today will bring guys to your life that want commitment, will allow you to show people that you are long term commitment material. And this system is meant to accelerate the process without actually skipping steps. And if you guys want to learn how to get married and talk to Father Alex 101, because I can marry you, click on the description down below and there I could teach you guys how to apply these strategies specifically to your life. We have 10, 15, 30, 45 minute sessions. You'll be able to talk to me, not to AI Alex or some other assistant, but to Father Alex, unlike some other dating coaches do. So click on the description down below and I'll see you in the altar. Let's continue with the video. We're gonna start with the number one reason people get divorced and that's your finance. I don't care about the emotional, I don't care about the chemistry, I don't care how cute, how golden his Dizzy is, you gotta make sure you get the number one cause of divorce out the window and it's this one. Well, first things first, you cannot go out there getting married while you're in debt. If you have a lot of debt and your finances, you gotta get that straight because your money, how you, how responsible you, you are with your money is a reflection of your emotional life. That even includes dating men who have a lot of debt. You gotta make sure that before you get married, you guys check all of that. Because some people get married, hide the debt, and as soon as you get married, then they tell you they have $300,000 worth of debt, right? So to be marriage eligible and not be toxic, you have to reveal to people the honesty about your finances, just like you want them to do the same thing. Because too many people get married with someone and everything's perfect, but then they realize they're hitting a debt, all right? So you gotta get your money right. And the first thing to get your money right is to not watch this channel, but to watch like Dave Ramsey, those types of people, watch them because guys will judge you if you have a lot of debt. I'd rather marry someone who doesn't have debt than with a woman with debt. Let's just keep it honest. All right, let's continue with the video. The first one is not marrying someone you meet from online dating. For the si simple fact that the further the person is from your family, the higher the likelihood of divorce, right? The, the relationships that usually last the longest and, and don't divorce as often are people who met through family members, all right? Now, usually it's because people, the people's families have similar value system to each other. So if you meet through family members, it most likely means that you guys have a similar value system and that usually leads to longer term relationships. Same religion, same point of view, same chocolate tasso, that type of stuff, right? Um, so remember people, no online. If you meet someone on Tinder, there's nothing wrong with that, but it just it increases the likelihood of, of you guys getting a divorce. When you meet people online, it allows you to actually go slower. Why? Because if you meet someone online, you know they like you. So what's the next thing? A date, right? What a horrible experience. But what's better is that if you meet them in real life, you don't know if they like you. So now you're, you're seeing them interact, but you don't know if, they, if you're their type. So now for the next week, you're wondering, would they like me? Do they like me? Am I their type? And then the next week happens and then they give you a weird look. You're like, oh my God, maybe they like me. All of a sudden, the process of, getting, if, of knowing if they like you is way longer than, you meet them, than when you meet them online. And this process of knowing if the person likes you, in my opinion, is crucial to create a certain level of respect for a long-term relationship. But if you already know that you like me from the beginning because you saw me like your photo, it, it, the mystery is gone. And there's, not, there's, a, there's a natural beauty in people getting to know you over time. Because think about it, right? You meet someone through your friends and family, you don't know whether or not it's a date. You don't because you're like, this could be friendly. This could just be a friendly thing. So even a date creates a lot of thoughts, a lot of, a lot of insecurities, right? But when you meet them online, God forbid you try to take me on, on a friendly date when I met you online, I'm blocking your ass, first of all. Second of all, you know it's the first date. Girl, you're already on the clock, all right? You're already on the clock. First date, boo-boo, we got three dates left. But if I meet you through my friends and family, I, I, don't, know where my, I don't know when that is, and I can't do that shit because you're telling me to my family, right? So there's a certain level of respect 
that the process of meeting people naturally in real life gives you that just online doesn't, right? The, the relationships that usually divorce as often are people who met through family members, right? Now, usually it's because people, the people's families have similar value system to each other. So if you meet through family members, it most likely means that you guys have a similar value system and that usually leads to longer term relationships, same religion, same point of view, same chocolatazo, that type of stuff, right? Um, so remember people, no online, if you meet someone on Tinder, there's nothing wrong with that, but it just incre increases the likelihood of them, of you guys getting a divorce. Now, the, the next thing is don't go after the rich and famous guys. Do not, I'm telling you. Um, you have a 52% increase of getting a divorce if you marry someone who is like a top 1%. Man, if you want a stable, long-term relationship to get married and not get divorced, you have to go for the normies. You, you cannot be going for fucking Jay-Z. You cannot be going for freaking the top, top guys because at, at the top, there's way too much competition and you're never gonna be enough for those types of guys, all right? So that's the second thing, right? Don't go for the rich and famous. The next thing is have your red flags and make sure that if they have one, one of those red flags, you dump them. People, some red flags should never be tolerated. If you notice that they, they, they never respond on time from the beginning, that's a red flag. It never leads to nothing good. If you notice they're very friendly with their exes and they're in a mature relationship with their ex, that's a red flag. If you notice that they cannot stop doing drugs, that's a red flag. Don't ignore, in fact, your red flags, if you see one flag, one flag, kick them out. Red flags grow, right? They, they don't just stay little flags. They don't just turn into blue flags. Now, where do you meet people, okay? So if you're gonna get married by the end of the year, you gotta be able to meet them, all right? And so if you're, if you're religious, meet them at a religious setting that is part of your religion. If you are into politics, meet them where all of the people who have a similar um, political beliefs meet up. If you like to meditate, go and hang around people who also meditate. You have to be around the things that you do. Be around the people who are similar to you. The, this is how you increase the likelihood of meeting someone that you guys are actually compatible, right? But if you're freaking religious and you're going to a rave, you're not gonna find a guy right there. You're just not, you, you have to go to where people meet. So even for example, right? If you like sports, right? Um, join a co-ed co sports group, right? Cause you're gonna meet a girl who likes sports. If you like to work out, meet, meet that person maybe at a CrossFit group. And if you don't have one, make one. You gotta put yourself in an environment where people have similar values, similar diets, similar points of view, similar uh, religious beliefs. You gotta go to where those people are because that is the one thing that will increase the likelihood of you guys living and staying together long term. Now, the next thing is attractive, attractive level. You gotta make sure you, you find someone who have a similar attractive level, okay? Because a lot of people think they're, they're, they're tens and in reality they're not, sorry, okay? But you, it, nothing creates unhappy relationships than knowing that your partner is harder than you and your partner knowing that they're hotter than you. I am telling you that it comes with a certain level of entitlement. You guys just cannot imagine you're gonna be freaking, gonna, gonna, you're gonna marry the hottest guy on the planet because it's not. No, sorry, I'm like yelling. <laughs> so the next one is go slow, people. Go slow. The reason why is this. Even though this video is about how to get married by the end of the year, you have to go slow. Fast is slow. Slow is fast. Right? If you just, if, if you allow the process to take its time, and this is what I mean. If you meet someone online, you can't go slow when you meet them online, right? Because you already have the first date. Um, don't go for chemistry. That's the next one. Go for compatibility. Chemistry, a lot of the times, is your own traumas masquerading in the form of having, having a good feeling with the person. And, and that type of stuff can blind you from a person's red flags, right? Chemistry blinds you from red flags. If you're looking for long-term marriage, compatibility is the most important thing. And I mean compatibility on paper. I don't give a fuck if, you feel, if it feels boring. Compatibility will, will create more peace than chemistry. Chemistry and using that as your decision making, like a psycho, is the one thing that's gonna cause you to make the wrong mistakes because your decision making is based on something that doesn't really provide for a long-term relationship. So don't go, for, don't go for chemistry, go for compatibility. The emotions will come as they go, said every father marrying their daughter to a blind date, right? Like, baby, you'll love him eventually, you know? Yeah, even though you don't like him, yeah, sure, he has a big stomach, but you'll learn to love it. What I mean by this is this, man, is that healthy people, unfortunately for me, go for compatibility 
and ignore the chemistry sometimes. And the thing is, is that it's just been, that's been shown to actually lead to longer term relationships. In fact, the love that you feel for someone who you don't feel strong chemistry in the beginning tends to be stronger, long term and healthier for you. All right. Now, the next one is this one, right? Go for people who are of similar attractiveness to you. I already, I know I already mentioned it, but I just feel like I have to put that in there. Similar attractiveness. Attractive incompatibility will lead to an imbalance of a relationship. And now the next one is if after two or three months, a person that you're dating doesn't want a relationship, they're not going to want marriage. After two or three months, if they don't want, if they don't want commitment from you, walk away from it. It's not going to happen. You're not going to change them. You're not, you don't have that magical poom poom. It doesn't work that way. All right. Now, now the next one is your appearance or <laughs> your appearance. You got to look like marriage material. Can't be looking like Miley Cyrus on, on top of a, of a freaking um, wrecking ball, right? You got to look like a marriage material. You got to look like that girl from The Godfather, even though she was 14 years old in the movie, right? You got to look like freaking Rose from Titanic about to jump from the, from the, from the, from the boat. You know, you, you, you got to look the part, right? So that means longer hair, right? Conservative. In fact, look like you're in a cult. How about that, right? Because that will give marriage vibe. Go slow, say no to the dig early, all right? Say, no, I don't want it, not now. <laughs> Longer incubation and above all, if you want to look like wifey, no social media. I swear to God, you do any of these things, you will look like wifey material. No social media, especially, right? Why don't know why? Because it comes down to the next point. You got to hide your past, girl. Guys are not feminists. They're going to judge you. If you told them you banged the whole football team, I don't care how open-minded that guy is, he's going to judge you. So you cannot tell people your past. Hide that shit. Scrub the internet from your past, ladies and gentlemen. So that means if you have shady past, if you were a criminal in the past, if you have any negative reputation amongst your friends and family, you got to find a way to scrub that shit off. Right? Move to a new area. Make new friends. Because rep unfortunately, reputation follows people. That The sad truth. Now, the next one is you got to prepare your mind for marriage, girl. And that means you got to practice meditation. It's not all their fault. You got to learn to look inside yourself and become present to the moment, people. But yeah, that's right. So that means have a meditation practice. And you know what's best? Date someone who will want to have a meditation practice with you. All right? Why? Because that will clear the mind that removes ego, that lessens the ego, that makes connecting with them even better. And in fact, you owe it to your children if you want to have kids. Kid, parents who are fucking crazy in the mind creates crazy kids, man. I'm telling you, crazy kids, right? And now the next one is mm, see from your past relationships and see, ask yourself, what were the things you did wrong? It's not always guys' fault. It's not always your fault. Sometimes you're the one that messes up. Sometimes you're the reason why, the, why some relationships end. And even though you may not be the reason in this case, try to find out how maybe you have some culpability. You know, the things that you can control in life are the things that you are responsible for, even if it's success or failure. But admitting your responsibility, your, 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 your addition, your admitting how you have something to do to the relationships and will improve the next relationship. It's like as, as a YouTuber, every time I make a video, I got to look at the video and see the next day where people like the video and where people clicked off. Because every time I do that, my videos get better. What, so if you're if you're noticing someone and you're trying to and you're trying to date them and see whether or not they're good material, notice how they talk about their ex. If they talk really bad about your their ex, it means they just have a chaotic relationship with the opposite sex, and it'll transfer over to you. I don't care how good your pum pum is, people never do things just once. So look at your past relationships. Maybe you were too too vindictive. Maybe you cheated. Maybe you weren't emotionally there. Maybe you need to go to therapy to become more emotional. Maybe you took too much too closed off maybe you accuse them of being too too needy maybe you're the one that doesn't like intimacy maybe they were completely normal ask yourself how you have something to do because i can promise you every person who i don't like has things about me that if they ask has th things about them that if they ask me i could tell them and it'll improve their lives just like me right i bet that a lot, there's a lot of things about me that people would like to tell that i gotta do wrong right but you gotta figure those things out in relationships, you have blind spots. And when you have those blind spots, it's very difficult to improve your relationships. And that's why you see patterns repeat themselves over and over again. So the, the last point about observing your mistakes in the past is what's going to allow you to have a longer relationship and make a guy want to commit to you long term. Right. Anyways, if you, you want to learn how to get a guy to commit, man, I have a course for you, ladies and gentlemen. 
It's called natural chemistry. It's a course that I made for women who are in relationships and who want to strengthen the bond that they have. So if you meet someone and you want to be able to apply these strategies, you guys should, should, should check out uh, natural chemistry. Or if you're single, you guys can check out my course, The Psychological Game of Attraction. Yeah, that's right, people. It's a course that I made for women who are single and who want to find the one. That course is a system. Both courses are systems that you guys can apply today. You guys can purchase my courses, all of them, in one go by becoming part of the Mindful Attraction University, where you're taught by Professor Alex. Or you guys can check out my courses individually and purchase them by... They're usually $99 each, so you could just click on the description down below, and there you guys can get them. And there's a 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can have it forever, okay? So go check it out, or else I'm closing the channel. Take care. Bye-bye.